to share the outdoor experience, regardless of opportunity, skill level, or ideals. This is the mission statement of Blue Collar Outdoors. Since 2006, I've poured my heart and soul into developing an idea that would allow everyday sportsmen to share their hunting and fishing adventures. Blue Collar Outdoors was born from this passion. Recently, I've toyed with the idea of creating a platform to show these experiences, to take raw hunting and fishing video from everyday outdoors folks, and then to produce a web show with that content. This is that show. This is Blue Collar Outdoor TV. Thanks for watching this episode of Blue Collar Outdoor TV, folks. I'm your host, Ryan Askey. On this episode, we're going to do a little bit of a bear hunting special. We're going to join team member Jason Chemission and a friend of his on a May bear hunt. And then we're going to take some time to show you how to process bear meat. Bear is incredible table fare, and team member Jamie Snow is going to take his cooking and his pre preparation expertise and show you how to make great meat products out of bear meat. Good day everyone, just out scouting for my uh, fall archery, seeing a couple of nice little bucks out here, still have some growing to go in the antlers, and looking good already, so um, bear, bear season has now come to a uh, conclusion and it was a, a successful season. Um, my buddy Colin came out with me one night and he uh, harvested a nice looking bear. I apologize for the shaky video. Uh, I didn't even get my, my camera up onto my uh, tripod. I didn't even have the tripod out yet and strapped to the tree, so I had to do it all by hand. And I, it'll be a little shaky, but hey, that's that's reality hunting right there. So um, just to tell you a bit of the story before you watch the video is we got up on the stand. We weren't even there for two, three minutes before this Bruin came in. He heard something at the bait. I'm sure he knew he, we were there, and uh, he wanted to come check us out. He couldn't circle down one of us, and basically uh, he eventually made his way into the bait.
got to stand. I didn't even get a chance to put my camera on the tripod and that boy came in. My buddy called and uh, <laughs> shot him. Oh, I can see him, he's down uh, maybe 60, 70 yards. Nice shot, nice bronze head shot. Um, the footage is going to be kind of shaky. There's uh, I didn't even get a chance to put this on the tripod. I was holding up my hand, so... Uh, I give kudos uh, to Colin. As you will see, he uh, he had a lot of patience, and that's one thing I could stress to all new hunters who are coming out: is have patience. Don't rush the shot. Uh, Colin must have drew back on his bear four or five times before he made a shot, and uh, he wanted that perfect broadside shot, and especially bear hunting. Just you got to be patient and just wait for that opportunity. Um, in a nutshell, uh, he did make a good shot and the recovery is 60 70 yards. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope uh, um, you don't get too mad at me even on the recovery. We waited to almost start to go recover the bear, and lo and behold, Mother Nature decided to rain on us. So, without getting the camera ruined and ruined the, uh, the footage, uh, I, I kind of had a pretty shaky recovery. So, uh, hope you enjoy it. And I uh, hope you learned something from it. I uh, hope everyone learned something from it about shot placement and taking your time and patience. Three key things when you're bow hunting. Hi, Jamie Kamatea here for Blue Collar Outdoors. Today uh, we're going to be working with some bear meat. I got a bear two nights ago. Uh, with bear you don't want to let it sit around too long. You don't want to age it like you do with deer. Uh, it's best to get it in the works as soon as possible. Whether that be just breaking it down, getting it off the bones, um, freezing it, uh, whatever it might be you're doing. But today we're going to be making some bear pastrami smoked corned beef pretty much. Uh, my mother-in-law bought a smoker in hopes uh, I'd turn out to be a great hunter and we'd uh, get to eat a lot of uh, tasty wild game and I hope my success continues. So of course if you want to just use the back straps, wrap them in bacon, roast them, uh, anything like that will work. Uh, you have to make sure you cook bear meat through I've had it medium before and haven't gotten sick, but that was a long time ago. And I don't recommend it just from the possibility of uh, trica, the trichinella bacteria being present. And you can't see it, you can't detect it. Freezing doesn't necessarily kill it, but uh, with the curing, the cooking, the smoking, we're gonna be all good. So, we'll start with, The ingredients for the brine for the pastrami so in the pot here I've got about I don't know three liters of water typically you might use a little bit more but I like to make a concentrated brine cool it with ice um, the reason that being is just then I can uh, process uh, the meat faster because you don't want to have it sitting in a hot brine, you want the brine chilled. And I could not procure any uh, pickling cure, which is just basically a curing salt that contains sodium nitrate. Uh, you used to be able to find Morton's Tender Quick and uh, curing salt at grocery stores everywhere, but I guess as a sign of the times, people aren't doing this kind of stuff as much as. Uh, they used to or maybe we should as a society but teach their own different strokes for different folks so the ingredients for the brine of course we got our water in the pot and then in this bowl I have it's about a cup of kosher salt and half a cup of the pickle cure concentrate I just got that at Canada compound in uh, Winnipeg if you can find uh, Morton's Tender Quick, 
it's basically the same kind of idea. So here we have one cup of white granulated sugar that goes into the pool. We have a half cup of packed brown sugar that goes in there. Here we have about three tablespoons of pickling spice. It's just a mixture of uh, typically mustard seed, bay leaves, uh, coriander, chilies, pepper. Here I have, uh, this is about six cloves, six about large but not huge cloves of garlic that I've grated on a microplane. Now what's a microplane you might ask? This is a microplane. And then uh, only suiting that we have uh, honey out of a bear bottle. We're gonna put about a quarter cup of honey in there. And how do I know it's a quarter cup? I'm guessing. I've been working in kitchens, professional kitchens for the last 18 years, so I trust my judgment. If you don't trust yours, measure it out. Then I'm gonna add four bay leaves. There's already bay leaves in the, the pickling spice. I just really like the bay leaf flavor, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. And we have Labrador tea leaves. The Labrador tea leaves have, have a, a wintergreen type flavor. It's not really minty. It just tastes kind of woodsy and sprucey, but it's mild. You don't have to add it if you don't want, and it's not very easy to find, so unless you're foraging it from the woods like me, there's, uh, I only know of one place in Winnipeg that sells it, so getting it out in the country, you'd probably have to mail order it or go out to the forest to find it yourself, which is fine. Any reason to get out there is a good one. And then we have some forged juniper berries. I'm only gonna put a few of those in just because I forged them and I like the flavor. I'm not trying to cover up any of the flavor of this bear because this bear tastes great on its own. So basically with this, all we're gonna do is let it come to a boil. And once it does, I'm gonna let it simmer. I'm gonna turn it down and let it simmer for about 10-15 uh, minutes just so all the flavors infuse into uh, the brine and then uh, we're gonna get the meat ready we're going to be injecting it with the syringe and it's gonna be curing for uh, about 48 hours and then it will be ready to uh, smoke and to cook Howdy. Okay, so we have the brine cooled down. We have our bear meat nicely cleaned. Another thing I forgot to mention uh, with any kind of game or meat you've processed yourself, a really quick way to turn people off is by having any kind of hair on the meat. Uh, to hunters, it might not be a big deal to get a mouthful of shot or, or a mouthful of uh, animal fur or hair, but for people uh, not used to that kind of thing, it's pretty gross. So, just take my syringe, and I'm just going to puncture each piece a couple times to get the brine in there, because I'm also going to submerge everything in the brine. This will just help the brine penetrate completely. Uh, it will make it a lot easier to use a syringe if you strain all the spices out of the brine first. But uh, I like to leave them in there just for extra flavor over time. Because it is going to be in the brine for two days. And if you've never used one of these syringes, it works. They work great for marinades, all kinds of things. They're very inexpensive. Um, I'll let you guess where I got this one from, but uh, I strongly recommend it. It's not necessary for everything. And all the prime cuts, you might not need to marinate for days, but when you're definitely doing any home curing or marinating, 
and tougher pieces. They come in handy. Hey, we're here at the smoker. It's been about 72 hours from marinating the bear meat in the pastrami brine. And I've got the electric smoker here. I really cranked it up with some dry uh, cherry wood chips, some Jack Daniels whiskey barrel wood chips, and smoking pellets as well. Add a little bit more charcoal flavor. So I like to, with a charcoal smoker or a propane smoker, electric smoker, I like to get the wood chips going first. Uh, at full blast, high heat, the dry. And then here I have a bowl of cherry wood chips, some more uh, whiskey barrel wood chips that have been soaking. And I'm just gonna add that to the pan and get some real good smoke going. And when, once we get a nice heavy smoke, I'll turn down the smoker and we'll put the bear meat on. So as you can see, we got some nice smoke coming off of the smoker. I'm just gonna load it up now with the bear meat. It has been brining for three days. A little pastrami brine. Now the smoking wood chips smell pretty darn good on their own. You can only imagine how amazing this is gonna smell in the next half hour or so. Now typically uh, beef pastrami will be crusted in coriander and pepper. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of that myself. If you wanna do that, then by all means, please do. So here we have the finished bear pastrami, it's all smoked, should be nice and tasty. Just in time for the thunderstorm. Hey, nothing wrong with spending a rainy day inside eating freshly smoked. Bear pastrami. If you have homemade sauerkraut, oh, that'll be good. Even if you don't, any sauerkraut will do. Hot mustard. Manitoba rye bread. We're talking magic. So yeah, I didn't take this too far just cooked through. I'm going to chill it and then once it's nicely chilled you can slice it on the meat slicer. Whenever you're slicing meat you see how the muscle fibers are running this way. Always want to cut against the grain of the meat. You're just going to end up with a lot more tender slices. You can just look each individual piece will probably be different. And whichever way you see the grain running just cut across it. And the thinner, obviously, the more tender it will be. And after this is just smoked and it's just cooked through, so you could also braise it further if you wanted to, uh, it falling apart tender. You don't have to just make sandwiches. You could uh, eat it as a roast, make a meal out of it. Well, thanks for watching this episode of the Colorado TV. Next month's episode, we're gonna have kind of a prelude to fall. August leads into September, and we're going to show you some September bow hunting action. It's going to be a great hunting episode next month, folks. You're not going to want to miss it.